I sat in my dorm room. Tears were streaming down my face. I reflected on the words that the professor said to me. You're not smart enough to be in college. You should drop out. Those words hit me like a brick. It stung and shocked me. I mean, I was going to college on a double sports scholarship, playing my two favorite sports, volleyball and basketball. I thought I was living my dream, but I couldn't get that image out of my head. As I sat in front of this man and he looked at me blankly with no emotion and said, you're not good enough. I was a mere 18 years old. And this was the first of many no's on my journey. But this one, it would stick with me. It would stick with me for the next 10 years. And as, as I went on to get my bachelor's, my master's, my doctorate, as I went on to start four successful companies, and even when I was hired as a professor at the age of 23 to teach in a master's program. You know that saying, sticks and stones will break your bones, but words will never hurt you? It's the most false saying ever. Words really do hurt. Fast forward to two years ago. I was living in my dream beach home and dream community that I always wanted to raise my children in. My businesses were flourishing and life was good. It was really, really good. But the last 18 months have been truly transformational. I thought I knew what persistence was until the nation shut down. And in a heartbeat, my four businesses of 19 years, gone. Everything I'd put into them, gone. I didn't know anyone could take that from you in an instant, but they did. And there I sat, teary-eyed, staring out my window of my home going, what now? See, I worked for everything that I've ever wanted to get, and I have always been the underdog. The scholarships I told you about, well, I had no club experience. I had to practice twice as hard, work twice as much as everyone else to get that position, that starting position, and win national titles. I was dyslexic, told I should be, drop out of school, but I went on to get my doctorate. And when I was told I shouldn't and couldn't start businesses, I started four successful ones. I mean, that's what I was really good at beating the odds. Tell me I can't and watch me succeed. But I was in some new territory with my businesses being shut down. I wasn't sure what to do. And as I pondered on that, I started to realize that my very successful self was going down very quickly. I had no income coming in. Someone decided to sue one of my businesses. I had a lawyer I couldn't pay for. It was one of the most stressful times in my life next to my mother dying. And then I started not to feel well. Turned out my blood pressure was high, heart attack level. And as I saw this happening, I started to go into this depressive spiral of thinking that I wasn't good enough. But then I had a realization. I realized that the failure that was happening in my life was not who I was. Actually, I had to realize that the failure was just an event a moment happening. And if I could accept that that was just a moment, then I could move forward. And when I had that realization, I went back to my businesses. And I may not have been able to get all four going, but I could get one. I started getting innovative, creative, building partnerships. And guess what? That business came back bigger and better than it ever had been before. But success doesn't come overnight. And I'm sure many of you know that. Success takes time. And what else takes time? Persistence. Everything I've done in my life has required persistence. And people ask me all the time, how do you do this? Oh my gosh, I wanna know, how do you run four companies? How do you do this? Well, I'm gonna give you three ways today to persist, to move forward. Many people today have talked about COVID and the effects of what it's done to us, to us, to our businesses, to our families. So I'm gonna give you the secret on how to persist. The first one is choice. Don't let anyone ever tell you that you don't have a choice in the matter. Guess what? You always have a choice. First thing you have to do is choose to persist. If you choose to persist no matter what is happening, you will move forward. It may not be fast, but you will move forward. I want to share a story with you that really talks about choice. A man died and he saw God coming with a suitcase. And God said, all right, son, it's time to go. The man said, so soon? I, I had so many plans. And God said, I'm sorry, it's time to go. The man said, what's in the suitcase? And God said, your belongings. 
And then I said, oh, like, like my clothes, money. God said, no, those never belong to you. They belonged here on earth. You can't take them with you. Well, is it my memories? No, I'm sorry, those never belong to you, God said. They belong to your past. Well, is it my friends? No, I'm sorry, those never belong to you. They belong to your life here on earth. Well, is it my talents? No, I'm sorry, those never belong to you. They belong to the genes bequeathed to you while here on earth. Well, is it my body? No, I'm sorry, that never belonged to you. That belonged to the dust. Is it my heart, my soul? God said, no, that belongs to me. The man, Terry, I looked at God and he reached out to get that, that suitcase. And he said, what does belong to me? And God said, your choices. Every choice you've ever made in your life belongs to you. And it is the choices you make that make your life meaningful. So the first one is choice. The second one is courage. When I was in college and I was told to drop out, it took courage to persist and keep going. When I went for my first job interview to be a college professor, and the hiring person said, sweetheart, women don't do business, the English department's down the hall. It took courage to fill out another application. And when I became a dean over 20 business colleges at a very young age of 30, and my boss told me I was too young to do the job, it took courage to continue to do the job. See, no one ever said it's gonna be easy, but you have to have courage. So let's talk about some people who have had courage to persist and have changed the world. One of the first ones is Henry Ford. I learned a lot about him with my father growing up. And before he had the Ford Motor Company, he went bankrupt five times and was left penniless, but persisted to create a billion dollar industry. Walt Disney. The beloved Walt Disney. He's entertained children for nearly a century and built a billion dollar industry. But at his first job, he was fired for lack of creativity and no good ideas. Let that one sink in for a moment. One of my favorites is Sarah Blakely. You wanna talk about persistence? She was selling fax machines door to door in the Florida heat. Right there, that woman's got some persistence. But she decided that the undergarments weren't good enough. She took $5,000 and started an undergarment line Everyone told her she shouldn't, she couldn't, she'd never make it. But she has built a billion dollar empire. And Sarah has a quote that I love. She said, growing up, my father encouraged us to fail. He would ask us each week what we had failed at, and if we hadn't, he would be disappointed. I learned at an early age that failure is not an outcome. Don't be afraid to fail. And obviously, Sarah wasn't afraid to fail as we look today at her billion dollar industry. So the second, is courage. You have to have courage in order to persist. And one of my favorite verses is, no weapon formed against you can harm, can harm you. And it's true. Really, you're the only person stopping you. You can be unstoppable if you choose to be. The third one is conviction. We can't do anything without conviction. You have to have conviction to do anything. I have things that are so important to me that I will never change my conviction on. And if you have that conviction, you will have no other reason but to proceed forward because you have to, because it means so much to you. So you have to have conviction to persist. If we look at the simplest form, the metamorphosis of a caterpillar to a butterfly. When that caterpillar changes to a butterfly, that butterfly is in that cocoon and it struggles and it struggles because there's so much resistance. But nature is really interesting because that butterfly has to struggle in that resistance in order to be successful. If I were to help that butterfly out and just open up the cocoon, its wings would not be strong enough to fly and it would die. You can't expect success in your life without resistance. And resistance will create persistence and persistence creates success. So how do, you might be thinking, Julie, I have a lot of failure, I, I have a lot of issues in my life, you know, how do I keep doing this over and over? Well, we have to build habits of persistence. And one of my favorite movies is What About Bob? I may be dating myself for you youngins, but Bill Murray plays this genius role of a man who is terrified of everything. I mean everything, he can barely leave his home. And one of my favorite scenes is Bob is walking down this busy street and there's tons of people and he's going, I am good, I am great, I am wonderful. I am good, I am great, I am wonderful. And he keeps saying it over and over and it's very comical. 
but it's because he knew that even though he didn't believe it at that moment, he knew that if he kept saying it and he kept doing it over and over, eventually he would get there. And throughout the movie, Bob likes to say, baby steps to the bus, baby steps to the car, baby steps to the house. Why? Because Bob knew the big picture was overwhelming. He, he couldn't look at the big picture because that was scary. But if he could baby step his way to it, he would eventually get there. And as you're building persistence in your life, you may need to baby step your way all the way there. But when you get there, you're gonna see some amazing things happening. So we may need to build our habit of persistence by baby stepping and convincing ourselves that we are great, we are wonderful, and that we are good. So my question to you is this, what are you wavering on? Meaning, what are you about to quit? Is it worth persisting? Can you persist? Will it be <coughs> tough? You're the only person who can answer that question. Remember, whatever you stop feeding will stop growing. So don't let something in your life die due to lack of persistence. Kelly Clarkson has a song called Broken and Beautiful. And I love the chorus. It says, I am superwoman, I am strong, I am phenomenal, I am enough. And in that chorus, it states something really important. Because very often, people do not believe they are enough, so they do not persist. I really hope today and all the rest of the days that you will continue to persist and you will rise up from the ashes. Thank you.